Did you know there are painters who use their brushes as applicators rather than as stroke makers? And they wonder why their colors are often muddy. Well, let's address that. Right, let me show you what I'm talking about here. Um, sometimes we refer to this particular action as dabbling, where you are not even concerned or not even aware of what the brush is doing, but you're just using it to put paint down. Well, uh, that's going to make mud, and it's also going to tighten up your painting. But I'm talking about this sort of thing. Let's just pick up a color random, uh, a combination of color random. Let's just put it anywhere over here. So here's what I'm talking about. Is you put a color down and you just keep stroking and just keep stroking and just keep stroking as if you just can't be happy until you stroke it to death. Every stroke um, mixes the color a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. And it, it takes away from that vibrancy of that first brush stroke. That's part of it. The other part of it is that the brush actually is a tool that can help you shape your subjects. And it also can, uh, using the brush as a tool, can cut down on the amount of time you're spending with your painting. When you're doing the dabbling thing, uh, like this, just dabble, dabble a little bit here, a little bit here, dabble, 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 you're also uncertain. You're, you're showing a certain amount of uncertainty. And so you, you really correct a whole lot of, um, of foibles when you, when you learn how to use the correct, uh, use a brush as a stroke maker and not as just a paint applicator. Now to begin with, uh, depend, determine the size of the shape you're working in. I've got this little uh, preliminary drawing done here, orange right here. Determine the size of the shape you're working in and use a, a brush, that, not only the size but the shape as well, use a brush that is larger than what you need rather than smaller than what you need. Use this, uh, the largest brush you can use to get the job done without feeling awkward. So I could actually begin with my wider brush here. Also, if if um, you can you can use either a flat brush or an um, an oval shaped brush, which we call a filbert. That doesn't matter so much because some people have preferences of one to the other. That doesn't matter so much as how you use the brush. So that's part of it. Now if I start out with this flat brush and, and I'm looking at this subject and I'm going to interpret the subject and I would want to start in the shadow areas first of that subject then what I would do is I would load my brush according to what I know about shaping shadows and then I set the brush down on the edge of the shape like this and pull it towards uh, either the edge of the shape in the other direction or I could pull it this way. So I have, I have the uh, potential of going one direction or another but by looking at the shape I'm working in and then allowing the brush, loaded brush, to move along in that shape, one stroke is all we need. Rarely do we need to stroke that more than once. The next thing then would be to pick up more color in the brush, um, place the brush, stroke it. And this time I might stroke it in this direction. Pick up more of the color in the brush. More of the color we need. I'm seeing that particular uh, that particular color is moving, beginning to move a little bit out of shadow, beginning to reflect a little bit of light, beginning to go a little bit green. So I load my brush with those colors and I don't have to just pick up right here. I can actually go right over here. And how you hold the brush it doesn't matter. It depends on how you are, where you're turned. It, it, matters to, it matters to the point that you don't want to hold it way down here and be stroking like this because that's going to tighten you up. But hold the brush as far back as you can. I like sometimes when I'm forming shape, I like to hold the brush like this depending on uh, how much leverage I need. And sometimes I hold the brush like this depending on how much leverage I need. And so then I might look at this shape and I might put my brush right there on the edge and just pull it right around like that. Then I would load the brush again. What colors do I need for the next stroke? It's always what you ask yourself. What colors do you need for the next stroke? Not just dipping into any color uh, randomly and then stroking trying to find the right color. So then I might, this time, I might stroke in this direction. 
I might pick up the next color I need for the next stroke. That would be determined by the subject. And then I might stroke in this direction. I might pick up the next color I need for the next stroke. And I might stroke in this direction. So you see the direction is determined by the shape itself. Um, I'm kind of over exaggerating this business now uh, just to make my point. I would put a little bit more shadow on that. You stretch one stroke that way. Um, if I needed to, well, let's see, let me pull just a little bit more of this color in here and I then we might stroke it in this direction. A little bit more of the color. And I'm seeing that I need there and then I might stroke it in this direction. So you see the brush moves each stroke moves in a different direction than the previous stroke. The brush gathers up the colors that it needs to make that stroke and then you determine the movement of the brush according to what the shape's doing. Whatever the shape is doing will tell you pretty much which way the brush needs to move. So I might move it this way. Now then if I want to scumble, that means if I need a little color riding on top of that, then I just turn it, turn the brush this way and do that little scumble like that. Now, and so then I can move into the rest of the shape. And well, why not just go ahead and do that? The rest of that shape, I look at the value of the shape, and then, okay, I see that this needs to happen like that. I see that this needs to happen like that. I see, I'm not uh, necessarily going into explaining the color mixtures and all here because what I want you to pay attention is the brush stroke. I'm seeing that this can happen like that. Seeing the next brush stroke I need to load, I see that I need that to be a little bit lighter. And so then, uh, which way can I go right here and there? If I need that blended, I could just sit the brush between the two and pull it. And as I'm moving around the shape, I'm seeing that I need to pick up just a little bit more orange. So as I said, remember, uh, each brush stroke, uh, tell each brush stroke what color it needs in it. So each brush stroke will then carry the color it needs to make the next portion of the shape, whatever that portion of the shape happens to be. And as I move around the, um, as I move around the, the meat of that orange, the interior part, pick up the next color and stroke it. And I'm seeing as I'm going around allowing my eyes to guide me and tell me what color did I pick up next. Um, I might go here next and pick up this color. I might go here. This is going to need to be a little bit darker. I might go here next and pick up the color there. I might go here next and this needs to be a little bit more orange. So then I might go here next and pick up the color there. And sometimes we can we can maneuver, we can can wiggle the brush around, we can do all kinds of things. This is basic. This is just basic instruction to get started with using the brush as a tool, as a shape maker, and not just as an applicator. Okay, then I can go right here and pull this direction and go here. But very rarely, very rarely are you going to need to uh, keep brushing, keep brushing until you brush the color out. There's another thing that I often see among students. I'll see them continuing to brush and continue to brush, continue to brush, continue to brush until they think they need to reload the brush, but you're not painting a house. You're creating a painting. So each brush load needs its own specific color to go wherever it needs to go uh, within the subject that you're painting. Alright, so we'll do one last little thing here and that is to uh, uh, on this particular subject, um, uh, here we would uh, we would place the outside. Now here, I can use the brush a little bit different. I can use the tip of the brush here, and with the tip of the brush loaded with that with that lighter color, I can simply pull it around. And uh, now, in some places, I might be able to turn it this way and get a little bit lighter. Turn it that way, to pull it around, pull it around, pull it around, and let's see it go this way. And the other thing that then I could do is use the corner of the brush and give that little uh, indicator. Now, if I wanted there to be a little bit more of that sparkle, then I would use the belly of the brush, load the belly of the brush with that value of color, and simply scumble like this, simply scumble along the surface 
to create the, that little texture that I need to see right there. A little bit more of that and that's probably enough to show you what I mean. It's very exciting. You can start just uh, if, you, if you're not aware of using the brush as a tool rather than just as a paint applicator. Just practice with what I've shown you here. Uh, practice with a simple shape allowing the brush to be loaded with a color, appropriate color for wherever it's going to go and then stroking along the, uh, the direction of that shape. And every shape goes in at least two directions. So you, you might go this way or you might go this way. Whatever the shape tells you it wants to do. So, if you found this quick tip helpful, why not explore our full-length instructional videos? Go to dianemize.com and you'll find that we have over 100 downloads of full-length lessons and DVDs of those as well. So give it a try. There's your quick tip.